If we want to consider the number of ways that four objects, four letters can be arranged, A, B, C, D, then we've already seen that if we think of this sequentially, I can choose any one of those four letters to be first. Once I've picked that one, then I have three remaining choices for second. Once I pick those two, two remaining, and then once I've picked those three, just one remaining. And so this gives me four factorial, or four times three times two times one, 24 permutations. And I can write those out. And unsurprisingly, if I work it out, a quarter of them have A first, a quarter of them have B first, a quarter of them have C first, a quarter D first. Similarly, a quarter of them have A second, a quarter of them have B second, and so on. The permutations which we calculated on the previous slide were concerned with ordering four letters in a string of four letters. But we can also consider cases where the number of elements available to us in the original set and the number of elements that I have in my ordered selection are not the same. Now there's two cases here. The first case is, I think, very easy, very trivial, and that can be shown by the pigeonhole principle. If I wish to select more letters than the number which are available, then that can't be done. If I only have three things to pick from, and I wish to pick 10 of those three, doesn't make sense, not possible. But the non-trivial case is when I'm trying to select a, I suppose, a shorter list, a smaller set than what I started with. So if I start with the letters A, B, C, and D, but I only wish to select two of those, there's 12 ways this can be done. We saw this in the previous video, introducing counting arguments, that there are four choices for the first letter, and each of those leaves three choices for the second letter. So I have four times three is 12, or I can consider that just as a ratio of factorials, where the two factorial on the bottom kind of tells me where to stop the number of terms at the top. A more challenging permutation problem occurs when I've got some repetition. Let's say that instead of selecting all four from A, B, C, D, and working out the number of orderings of A, B, C, D, I want to work out the number of ways of ordering all four of A, B, C, and C. Obviously the difference here is that the letter C appears twice, so this is going to reduce the number of permutations. If I think of the example from the previous case where I had no repetition, I had 24 orderings of A, B, C, D. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now I can think of this sort of the same, but where all of the Ds are replaced with Cs. So of course, if I replace this list with this, all I've done is I've copied the list, but everywhere there's a D, I've replaced it with another C. So what you can see is everything in the old list, comparing that to the new list, Everything in the new list appears now twice, because A, B, C, D became A, B, C, C, and also A, B, D, C became A, B, C, C. So I've sort of double counted in the second list. Similarly, if I start in the bottom left corner, what used to be D, A, B, C is now C, A, B, C. And that's already there because that would be the same as the original C, A, B, D. 
So the number of ways that each one is replicated in the second list is, is twofold. One, every string appears twice in that list. So I started with 24, but I acknowledge that everyone is in there twice. So I, in fact, have half that number. So I only have 12 permutations with this one repeated character. And in general, if I've got a character which, which is repeated n times, then there's n factorial repetitions associated with that. Here, the only repetition is C appearing twice. So the effect of that is to reduce the count by a factor of two factorial or a factor of two, i.e. halving it. So let's make this much harder. We've got 19 letters in the phrase discrete mathematics. So there are 19 factorial ways that I can arrange all 19 letters. But that doesn't account for repeated letters. If I work out how many times, there's two A's in there, ma, ma, for mathematics. Then I've got that. I've also got E appearing three times, discrete E, math, e, matics. I've got three E's. So the effect of two A's is that if I said 19 factorial, that count would be twice as big as it should be. The effect of treating that when I've got three E's is the fact it's sixfold increase because I'd have three factorial. So if I work out how many uh, times each letter appears, there's one D, two I's, two S's, two C's, and so on. But if I work out the number of permutations acknowledging all of this duplication, then I've got 19 factorial ways without acknowledging that duplication. But then I've got to divide that by, well, the fact D isn't duplicated, doesn't affect it. So I divide by one factorial, division by one. The fact there's two i's means I have to divide by two factorial. The fact there's two s's means I have to divide by two factorial. Two c's, so divide by two factorial, and so on. The e and the t appears three times, so I have to divide by three factorial to correct for those. Now I'm not going to even try to read out what that number is. But there's clearly a heck of a lot of permutations, even allowing for um, the repetition. My favourite of these repetitions is that discrete mathematics is an anagram of academic hermit tests, uh, which you may or may not find appropriate. But anyway.